We all remember Fred Hollows, the eye doctor, who dedicated his life to helping restore sight. Now there's another Australian following in his footsteps, but using technology that sounds like science fiction. Her name is Penny Allen. It's opening up a whole new world. This revolutionary Australian first uh, that will give blind people uh, the ability to regain their vision. What cochlea uh, has done for the profoundly deaf is exactly what this system is going to do for the blind. It was here at the Royal Victorian Eye and Ear Hospital where the world's first cochlear implant was fitted. 43 years later, something just as remarkable is happening. The point of our recent trial has been to develop um, at, at what we call our Generation 3 device. Associate Professor Penny Allen has dedicated her life to helping others see. For a decade, this humble surgeon and her team at the Centre for Eye Research Australia have been developing what many others have only dreamed of. Did you ever think in your career that you'd see something like a bionic eye? No. No, no, I didn't. I didn't actually, no. It's history making that's going to change the lives of vision impaired people. Great-grandmother Colleen Knowles is one of millions robbed of their sight due to a genetic condition of the retina. We live on the foreshore. I can look out over the bay and, and know whether there's any boats out there on the bay. Whereas without the device on, I don't even know there's a Technically, I know there's water and sand, but I wouldn't be able to tell you with the naked eye. And while the technology hasn't completely restored sight, it's given wearers a new lease on life, allowing them to see flashes of light like this. Another trial participant is seen here navigating his local shopping centre. I'm 66 now. I first got diagnosed when I was about seven, and it's gradually got worse over the those 60 years. For grandfather Mark Boyd, it's been the little things like going to the theatre. I would stay, perhaps stay, stand in the foyer and I'd hear people around me, but I wouldn't be able to know, except if I'd sound, how close. But with the device, you could sit in there and you could scan around and you'd know, oh, someone's there, someone's there. Where we used to live, there were a lot of trees in the nature strip. Now, I'd lived there for about seven or eight years and I never knew that there were trees in that nature strip. But once I put the device on, um, I was able to, you know, appreciate that that landscape was there. Mm. And then I was getting the trees on the other side of the road. Colleen still vividly remembers her switch on day. Probably the first seven or eight times, nine times maybe, they'd say, can you see anything? No, 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 no. And then all of a sudden, oh! And my family were in another room watching it through CCTV. So it was exciting for them as well. Because I was sitting there thinking, oh, it hasn't worked. And yeah, it did work. The cutting edge surgical technique involves placing an implant on the skull, which attaches via a lead to electrodes within the back of the eye. The glasses have two cameras capturing footage that's sent to this unit, which converts the video into an electrical impulse. That then passes back to the skull onto the device in the eye, which stimulates existing tissue, helping wearers see. They would be able to identify obstacles so that they could avoid them whilst walking along. This sees another patient, Sefa, sorting out the different colours of his laundry. Well, you got them all right. 100%. Wow. <laughs> it's uh, the next frontier when it comes to digital medicine and medical technology. The device is being co-developed with Bionic Vision Technologies, which hopes to take it to market by 2025. CEO Dr Ash Atia has an ambitious aim. To uh, enable us to make this uh, very uh, important technology available for all these blind people who have absolutely no uh, alternative treatment anywhere in the world today. It's very satisfying that um, the patients are able to do particular tasks, increase their social interaction by using the device. And that's, that's what drives people to do, drives us all, that satisfaction. 
only leads to a, you know, an appetite for more work, more development and making it better. So, where to from here? While it may not completely restore sight to people like Mark and Colleen in their lifetime, they hope the real winners will be in generations to come. And I've got kids that have got the same eye condition as me um, and potentially I could have grandkids that do, so, so they, it could be them that get a better benefit than I get. If you've got a hereditary type of condition, there's sometimes that little bit, even though it's not your fault, there's still that bit of guilt that you know, they've picked up this genetic condition from me and I see that down the track um, being a relief for parents and that as well, to know that something can be done. Eyesight is precious. To lose it is debilitating and to restore it is nothing short of miraculous and life-changing. Yeah, it really is a miracle. And before being made widely available, the bionic eye will undergo a third clinical study in early 2023.